Hello, and thank you for tuning into Dot Slash. Today, I want to talk about disaster recovery. Now, whether you have updated your system, changed some partitions around, uh, did some tinkering around and whatever, you reboot your system and you end up at the Grub Rescue screen, or maybe even your BIOS pops up saying, hey, I don't know what to boot. As long as you have your data intact in your partitions, all your stuff is still there. You just need to tell your computer, tell the the BIOS, the UEFI and whatnot, how to boot your system, get back to your desktop. Now, before getting into it, I want to give a extra special thank you to all my viewers, subscribers, and my Patreon patrons for helping me build this new production machine. It's uh, not super high budget or anything, but now I have a dedicated machine specifically for recording YouTube. It's a Ryzen 5 with 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD. It's working really great so far now that I finally have it all set up and running great. So thank you again so much to everybody who's viewed, subscribed, and contributed to both Patreon and to my PayPal donation link. Now the first thing I'm going to harp on is backups. You should always, always do backups. I've got Time Shift installed here, and I'm going to show you really quick. I did a video on this before. I'll put a link on the screen and in the description on that video. I also did another video, which I'll also link on how it saved my bacon one time, more than once, but this one particular time, I actually show you a run through how it restores. The beauty of this is it will not only recover your files, it will also optionally reinstall Grub for you. If you go into the settings, you can schedule it monthly, weekly, daily, even hourly, or every time it boots. This is really fantastic, and the way that I do it, you could do it any way that you want, but on all my systems, I always have, this is all my system here, I always have a backups partition, a separate 50 gig partition just for backing up the system. Now, when you're setting up time shift, go check out the other video. You don't have to include your home folder. You can, you can if you want, but you can also back that up separately, which is what I do. Now, another option that you can do is download a ISO and keep it on a USB stick. Keep it handy nearby. I recommend this Gparted Live. If you Google Gparted or go to gparted.org, there's a, a live CD that you can download. It's a really simple uh, utility. I'll boot it up, but you can use any live ISO that you want as long as it gets you to a desktop or a command prompt and you're able to ch root or change root into your existing operating system that you're trying to recover. And I'll show you how to do that. So let me just move this up here and switch to Scrappy. Scrappy is my 10 year old PC here that I just installed Linux Mint on. And we're gonna go through and I'm gonna go into boot here. And you can see Grub is installed here. So we're gonna do uh, remove and Grub. So now Grub is gone. This is, again, an old PC. It does not have UEFI. It's just installed into the MBR of the disk. So I'm going to reboot and show you that obviously it doesn't work. And then we're going to go in and fix it. There are a couple extra steps you're going to want to do if you do have a UEFI system. And I'll touch on that as I'm going through it. So. As you can see, I'm at the Grub Rescue screen because I deleted all the Grub settings and now it doesn't know what to do. So pop in your live ISO USB. If you don't know how to do that, uh, there's tons of guides how to get the ISO onto a USB stick. I personally use DD. All right, so mashing F8 because I want to boot the USB disk. Now. You get the screen here. I just use the top. There are different modes based on graphics and whatnot. I'm just going to select the first option. And it is a USB 2.0, so it's going to be a little bit slow. All right, now you can see here your key maps. If you have a US keyboard, just don't touch key map. You could change them if you want to, but I don't have to I'm going to do that. Language, you have all these different languages. The default is US English 33, so you just hit enter and continue to start X to use Gparted automatically. You can do that, or you can run force video if you're having graphics problems, or you can just do command line prompt. So I'm just gonna hit enter and it's gonna bring me into 
a graphical environment. And this is basically what you get. It's very, very simple, very basic. It opens Gparted automatically for you. So you can see here, this is where all the information is for where the OS is installed. It is SDA5, so make note of that. And I have a Linux swap and an extended, which is where the SDA5 resides in. Yours will look different. Just be aware of where your information is. So from here, you can open a terminal. And if you also want to confirm, and I'm gonna make this much larger so I don't have to zoom. You can also do sudo fdisk hyphen L, and this will show you all the drives in your system. So you can see here SDA, which is the local hard disk, the one I'm trying to repair. And then SDB is the USB stick that I booted off of. So from here, you're going to do a couple of things. You need to mount your, your various folders, your devices and your proc folder and well, your sys folder into the system that you're ch rooting into. I'll just do it and then I'll explain it on the way. So first we're going to go into mount. Now we're going to mount the partition that you're trying to get into. So in this case, SDA5, you're going to mount that to slash MNT. So since I am in the slash MNT folder, you can do an LS. LS, there you go. I had to go out and in, it doesn't matter. I should have done that last. So now you can see all your files are still here. So your home folders there, all your files are there. Now, if you also have a UEFI partition, you're going to want to mount that as well. So you could just hit up and you can redo it. If your UEFI boot partition is SDA1, then you're going to do that, mount boot, and possibly EFI. If you're not sure, you could just put slash boot, and when we install grub, it'll install it properly. So do that. So next, you're going to mount bind proc to mount proc. These are all your processes. Uh, if you've watched my video on the Linux file system explained, everything in Linux is a file. And when you're running an environment, it needs to access these processes. It needs to access the devices and whatnot. So this is what we're doing here. So we're basically taking the proc from the gparted environment, and we're going to mount it into the environment that we're going to change root into. So also do dev and also do sys. I'm just hitting the up key so I can just retype. It's a lazy way of doing it. So what you can also do is if you want internet connection, you do etc resolve.conf to mount etc resolve.conf. That will copy your settings in when you ch root into it, you're going to have internet access. Unfortunately, I've run out of ethernet ports available. So this computer that you're looking at here isn't actually connected to the internet, but this is what you're going to do. So once you're done that, you're going to sudo ch root, change root into mount. Bin bash is your shell. And there you go. So now I'm essentially in the Linux Mint system. My devices and my processes, the system, they're, they're all uh, mounted inside. So everything's going to work as it should. And from here, I can just do a sudo grub install slash dev SDA. Remember, this is BIOS. If you're doing UEFI or if this is a, an Arch install or anything, you're going to have to look and see how how it's installed. There are different ways you could do uh, grub mk config hyphen o slash boot grub grub dot conf. I believe that's what it is. Depending on what distro you're using, that's what you're going to type. This is 
Debian and Ubuntu based, what I'm doing now, and this is just MBR. We've installed grub on SDA, and we're gonna do a sudo update grub. Okay, so found all this stuff. Uh, failed to connect to LVME tad, don't worry about that. I don't have LVM on my system. This error, you can ignore it if you're getting it. If you're using um, LVM partitions, there's a bit more to it, but this is just for ext4 partitions. Everything's done, generated the config file, it found our stuff. So now we're going to exit and you're going to get out of there, unmount, sorry, sudo umount mount proc and dev and sys and finally unmount mount. So now your system's completely unmounted and now you can just reboot. You can sudo reboot, All right? So as soon as I see my splash screen here, I'm going to pull out the USB stick. And there we go, splash screen really quick, login screen. And we're up and running again. So that's one of many ways of your disaster recovery. If you have multiple distros on here, this will work as well. It should find all your distros, just boot into, or ch root into one of them, and it'll get you going. And I can just go to file system boot, and you can see the grub folder that I deleted is back. Configuration is back. Everything is up and running. So that's not too bad. So if we go, uh, let me just go back here, see some examples that I can find. Let's do um, Arch Linux install guide, for example. Okay, so if we scroll down, bootloader, bootloader, and go down to grub. I could put this link here as well. If you're doing the UEFI system installation, it'll show you right here. Grub install, target, EFI directory, bootloader, ID equals grub. So different way of doing it. And you're also going to have to run the grub MK config O boot grub, what I was typing earlier. So depending on the distro, you're just gonna have to do something slightly different. And if it's UEFI, make sure you mount your UEFI partition while you're mounting all the other stuff before you see it root in. And once you reinstall Grub, hopefully you end up with a working system. Now, if you have additional issues like drivers and whatnot, basically you're going to want to do one of two things. Let me just reboot once again and see if I can get the Grub screen to come up. If your Grub screen comes up, automatically it's easy if it doesn't well then you might have issues all right so by mashing the left shift key you'll end up at the grub menu if you hit e you can edit so if we scroll down here what you're looking for is this line here it's usually uh, easy to spot because it says quiet splash and VT handoff. But if you see quiet or splash, this is the line that you want. So at the end here, you can add a three and then hit F10 to boot. So this will make sure you're not booting into your graphical environment. It's gonna drop you down to a console. So you can see here, I can log in and I can do stuff here in the console. Now, if you're still having issues getting here, if you change that number to a one, I'll show you here, it could be graphics issues. It could be more in-depth hardware issues. And just mash the button, mashing the shift key. I know you can hold the shift key, but for some reason it doesn't always work. So you go down here, quiet splash, change that to a one, hit F10. Now you're gonna to get to maintenance mode and 
a lot less has been loaded. It's a lot more basic and you just enter your password for maintenance. So this should, this should work. If this doesn't work, you have much bigger problems. You can see through it in and tinker with it. If you can't get here, then maybe it's time for a reinstall. But at the very least, at this point, you can at least access your files and copy them somewhere else so that you can reinstall and recover them. This is why I say, do your backups. Always do your backups. If you do your backups, especially with time shift, do any of this. If you look at the video, you can see how you can boot from a USB stick and still restore with time shift. That video that I linked earlier on time shift. I hope this helps you out in your disaster recovery or at least have a plan. If you have that USB stick with a live ISO on it, label it, put it in a drawer or somewhere safe. So you always have it no matter what, you should be able to get back into your system, whether you're using time shift or whether you're CH rooting in to manually reinstall. You have multiple options, but the best way is prevention. So do your backups. That's all I got for now, guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget you can also follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash and head on over to Patreon.com slash Dorian.slash to help support the channel and help me support the Linux community. I'm Dorian and until next time, bash on.